Okay, amazing Nick Dutch, uh, long-standing professional tarot reader, coming back to you again to talk about tarot, strangely enough, because, like, it is a passion of mine. This pack I've had for a long time, this deck I've had for a long time, and I've split it up this way so I can show it to you, and you can get a feeling as to what I'm talking about. I'm not going to talk too long about it, it's just that it's pretty cool. Uh, it is, of course, the Merlin Tarot, and I and I I got this like really really mixed relationship with it, to be quite honest. I mean, this is one of the things which is so cool about tarot. It's ever changing. It's flexible. It's malleable. You can interpret it in numerous different ways. You can design it in numerous different ways. You can get different things out of it in different ways. And people who are like active in the arts of designing tarot decks and divination cards and the rest of that. They're just like adding to a really, really rich, uh, expanding, growing, developing, uh, you know, infinite tradition, which is never going to end. And I think that's pretty exciting in its own right. Uh, the Merlin Tarot has been designed uh, with its own system, its own kind of like cosmology, its own structure to uh, the trump cards, it, the, you know, major arcana, as we call it, and its own understanding of the minor arcana. Sure, it's still got your four suits, it's still got your... Same number, 22 trump cards, um, but it's different. You've got beasts, you've got serpents, you've got birds. Uh, you know, you've got different types of suits there. These are the court cards here. Uh, the artwork is actually quite good. I mean, if, you, if you're into the art of your tarot cards, then this is actually quite well drawn uh, within reason, okay? And also quite evocative. The kind of like spirituality of this particular tarot pack is much more uh, pagan orientated. The book itself does go into the typology of different types of people and connects that to the characters within the cards themselves and how they all fit in together. So it's looking quite good. In some respects, I really get the feeling that this is trying to bring back a more ancient form of cartomancy because it's not based purely upon tarot tradition it's based more upon nature and the meanings that we get from nature and the natures of people and the natures of ideas and putting that together in a more intuitive manner the, the book even has its own styles of spreads which I don't use okay I've got my own style of spreads I've got the Nick Dutch tradition I've got the Nick Dutch way of doing things and that's fine uh, and also they've created their own versions of kind of like the, the Kabbalistic Tree of Life within their own methods with a combination of like um, astrology and elemental signs associated with it. The order of the majors is slightly different, okay, because it's telling its own story. Let me just show you some of the majors just because they're, you know, pretty, pretty awesome. Now I've got the cat to my right who's reminding me I should be giving him much more attention. Uh, so forgive me if all of a sudden you, you do hear a spurious meow in the background, okay? Uh, I mean, the sun card. Well, I mean, that's just... It's just nice. It's just like, it's got this whole sort of like earth worship thing going for it. It's quite, quite you know, powerful and beautiful. The hangman actually looks quite traditional in uh, lots of different ways. But, it's, but there's a few things missing which the experts out there, I'm sure, would be able to pick up upon, okay? Uh, and the message of the lovers is very different. It's more like a, it's more like a sort of like a wedding scene rather than the passing of the ways because the the original lovers card, okay, if we go way way back to uh, the Tower of Marseilles, which is a very traditional deck, it's much more to do with the male character choosing between uh, the mother and the lover. Okay, choosing from the family to start his own family, and therefore it's a question of taking on more responsibility. Whereas in this particular card, you got much more the sort of like, uh, you know, emotional love, the kind of like passion of that side, you know, passionate aspect, aspect thrown in. And of course, if you like naked people, you got some naked people thrown in there as well. Well, this is going on the internet, so maybe you know I should be having that as like the thumbnail for the whole thing. I don't think. <laughs> Uh, no, I've, had, I've had a really long day today, actually. I've done an awful lot of work. Lots of life-changing conversations I've had with my customers. The moon, more traditional, I think. You know, it's got that... It, it fulfills a lot more of the, the work of what the moon should be about. And therefore, it's less weird. But as you, as you can see there, it's numbered. Number one. 
Okay, so what's really going on there? What's going on there is because the Merlin Tower has been designed like a story in its own right. Okay, which you engage with both through divination as well as through the study of the symbols, study of the ideas, and connecting it to the story uh, of you know of, of the guy in question. You know, so it's 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 curious. It's beautiful. And I'm pretty sure some people would be using these as far as their own contemplations of their, you know, understandings of personal or spiritual higher powers as well. So it's, it's, it's you know, interesting that it's got the overtly uh, pagan aspects to it, as well as trying to connect much more with tarot. I mean, this one is just very pure in terms of its paganism and very pure in terms of its understanding of the character of the story. It's, it's just nice. I mean... I mean, you've got a choice, haven't you? You can do what all of us do, which is just turn on Netflix and just chill at the end of a long day. Or you can settle down and you can, like, you know, read the book and have a look at the cards and, and just try and take in the story and get your entertainment through the intellectual stimulation or the challenge of what, let's say, a tarot deck is trying to present you with. Okay? And this one is quite challenging. For me, it's challenging, very challenging, because it goes contrary to the conventions, to the original interpretations, which I got used to and I became a part of when I started following tarot as, like, my job and as, the, you, know, the way I, you know, the way I am and what I do. This is my full-time job. And today has been incredibly busy. You don't know how much hard work I've done, done today. It's been astounding. Hmm. And the quantity of like social interactions I've had to read on today and how complex they were and how involved they were. And there was like some very serious, difficult situations that people had got themselves into. And there was me there helping to get them out of them and to try and provide these people with like the clear and true appropriate path for their life that would bring them success and achievements in their relationship life and in their career life. And in all the things that really, really matter. Um, the burden of responsibility on me was big. But, you know, I, I, I did it. I did, I did it well. Okay, uh, so the pip cards in this deck. The aces themselves, very, very much in keeping with trying to keep the suits in accordance with the tradition of the deck, as you can see. Alright. Got your beast and your fish there. Mm. So it's it's cool, but the the main pip cards, not the court pip cards or the or the aces, they just got like uh, words at the bottom on this one particular deck for what the meaning of each one is supposed to be. Okay, which I guess could help you in learning, but again, it's it's different to the way in which I came to understand. I mean, I'm um, having the two of discs is often seen as a change card anyway. Okay, so so there are some similar ones. I mean that's like an earth card would connect with discs. So some of them are, some of them are, are the same, but some of them are different. There you go. Four of serpents and generosity. I mean I as someone who's been reading intuitively with the Alistair Crowley Thoth Tarot for a long period of time, I just don't get the same kind of buzz from this. You know, you, you've got to be into the symbolism if you were going to be reading, you know, actually getting out there and consulting with people and trying to change people's lives with this one particular tarot deck. You know, it's a, it's a different experience, and that's the thing I want to try and convey to you. And because it's a different experience, it's there for a different energy. It's got its own character, it's got its own personality, it's got its own, like, vibration, its own way of, of doing things and explaining stuff. You know, it's just like... But it's good. It, it, it's just good. I mean, you can't... You, I don't think it's possible to get totally bored of all this stuff. Because it's never going to stand still. This is, you know, this whole culture of cards and card reading and all that kind of stuff. It's just never going to stand still, ever. Ever. It's quite good for me to just get this deck out and show it to you, because, like, 
you know, it's doing things to me right now whilst I'm also having a look at it and I'm looking at the imagery and I'm thinking about it, I'm feeling it, man, you know what I mean? All right. I mean, I, I like I like the Wheel of Fortune there. Again, you know, they they've they've thrown in some cheeky allusions to tradition, but they've also kept it true to their own mythology. And I think it's it, it just ah, I could, uh, maybe what I should be doing is like going back to what people normally do when they, you know way way back when they're setting up on YouTube and saying, "Hey, man, I'm a tarot reader," and they're just like going through each and every single card and each and every single runestone one at a time. I could do that, you know, but I think that would just bore you rigid. You just, you, I don't think you actually want to have that stuff. You, what you, well, one thing you people have got to understand, okay, and one thing I've got to come to terms with myself is I'm not a full-time professional content creator, okay, I'm just not. I'm a full-time professional tarot reader, that's what, that's what I do. So, I mean, like, it would be lovely to just, like, you know, do all the stuff with, like, After Effects and by, by Adobe and all that kind of cool stuff. But that's just like not my job. I'm not in a position right now whereby I have to earn advertising revenue from YouTube videos. Okay? Uh, I could do Patreon. I don't know if that's going to be too much hassle or not. I, I don't see the point at the moment. I'm, I'm working. I'm working hard. And I'm doing my damn job. And my damn job is what gives me pleasure and what gives me excitement. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't really think that the shaggy sheepdog in the background is necessarily totally traditional. I mean, it's just... <laughs> oh man, I'm overtired. <laughs> nice, friendly little shaggy sheepdog. No, that's not what it's supposed to be. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's a tarot deck. It can be whatever it wants to be. It's, it's living. It's... it's it's designed to be living, it's designed to be breathing, it's designed to have its own thing and to tell its own story and to carry its own thing. And, you know, there's, there's no such thing as tradition, really. I mean, there is, and, and there isn't simultaneously. Because you, you can't take the, too many spiritual traditions too seriously. You just can't do that. You know, you got to look at this stuff with, uh, you know, your tongue in your cheek and and realize that the fact that there are challenges to tradition is a good thing, okay? You know, challenges to tradition keeps us on our toes, it keeps us alive, it keeps us, you know, enjoying the, the wonders of, like, why it is we think what we think. Because a lot of the, re a lot of the time we think the, what we think because, like, we were told something, and hey presto, it seemed to make sense at the time, but because just because it made sense at the time, it doesn't mean to say that that's necessarily the truth or the reality, and there's no such thing as the actual truth, the actual technique, you know, there's no such thing as it, okay? People only say that because they're trying to control you, they're trying to like make out that they are the most important people, and you've got to listen to them, you've got to do as you're told, and I think that's that's just not conductive. We should be individuals who can look after ourselves and learn how to think things through for ourselves. There's no actual tradition of tarot. I've got the Nick Dutch way. The Nick Dutch way works. Is what it has worked for me. You know, it's worked for me because I've, I'm out there and I'm, I'm talking with people and I'm solving people's life problems. I, I really am. You know, this is serious stuff. You know, some of the things I've heard, some of the things I've really, really, really heard down the phone line today. OMG. Okay, we're, you know, just like the burden of people's life. You know, the, 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 the things that people have to go through. <sighs> you know, I mean, anyway, I'll leave it there and you'll have another tarot video coming up. Or maybe I'll start looking at the runes. Keep yourself... Cool. I know I've been a bit rambly today, but I am tired and I have been working my ass off, so relax. Speak to you again soon. Uh, there may be some links down below if you want to engage with me and have a reading with me, so speak to you soon.